Hi, everybody. My name is Kieran Campbell, and thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. I have a very special guest with me here today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Nicole Dandrea Russert. She is a plant-based dietitian and author, a yoga instructor, and the owner of PurelyPlanted.com. Her focus is plant-based eating for the body, mind, and health of the planet, and she specializes in food for mood, sleep, and hormonal balance. She's the author of The Fiber Effect, Stop Counting Calories and Start Counting Fiber for Better Health, and The Vegan Athlete's Nutrition Handbook, The Essential Guide for Plant-Based Performance. And she's a co-author of Real Superfoods Cookbook and Powered by Plants Cookbook, which is scheduled to be released in October of this year, 2024. She's been featured in Eating Well, Veg News, and Better Homes and Gardens, and is a nutrition spokesperson for the Weather Channel's Pattern and AMHQ. She lives in Atlanta with her husband, Ricky, and her rescue pup. Is it Mariposa? Yes. Okay, Mariposa. very cool. <laughs> Um, so thank you for being here, Nicole. Um, she is going to help explain the connection between plant-based foods, mood, stress relief, and heart health. And she's also going to very kindly and generously go over a few yoga poses and breath work techniques to help reduce stress, um, which could also benefit cardiovascular health and overall health, including sleep. Thank you for the introduction, Karen, and thanks for having me. I'm really excited to chat about today's topic. Mm -hmm. So first, I, I kind of want to start by going over the the link between nutrition, mood, and, and stress. So I, I have a question for you. How does what we eat impact our mental health and help help us manage stress? So much. So it's interesting. It's actually bi-directional. So when we feel good, mentally like grounded and we feel, um, well, we, there's research showing that we tend to choose healthier foods. And then also the food impacts the way that we feel. So it goes both ways, but really just knowing, I think it's really important for folks to know that food can really directly impact your physical and mental health. It's all connected mm -hmm. and what we eat can make a really big difference. So just like on a broad scale, um, ultra processed foods that don't offer a lot of nutrition. So fried foods, you know, things with a lot of refined sugar and oils, uh, saturated fat or trans fats, these can be um, inflammatory and detrimental to health. And we think of inflammation a lot of times as inflammation in the body, like maybe pain or um, just things happening in our joints, but there's inflammation in the brain too. And these foods can be inflammatory to the brain, which can affect our mood, can affect the way that we think, the way that we focus, our sleep, you know, just so much. So, um, you know, occasionally, maybe some of us, you know, if we go out and we have French fries at a restaurant, or maybe occasionally we're doing those things, not to say that we have to be perfect, but a majority of the time choosing foods that, that are nourishing, that are nutrient dense and plant-based foods offer these nutrients nutrients that support um, brain health and support um, reducing inflammation. And we can go more into that, but, you know, on a broad scale, the inflammatory foods are going to be those that are ultra processed. And then also uh, meat and dairy, because they're high in saturated fat, saturated fat is linked to inflammation as well. Mm -hmm. So those food groups, and then um, focusing more on plant foods that are high in antioxidants and fiber are really going to help to fight inflammation and support brain health. Yeah. And I think that that totally makes absolute 100% sense, because that's what we've been told growing up, you know, eat more fruits and vegetables. And a lot of us don't because out of convenience, you know, we go to fast food and restaurant meals and those things are, you know, super processed a lot of times and have a lot of saturated fat, like you said, that can have a negative impact. And one thing you said is like the inflammation in the brain. We, I think a lot of people know about inflammation that happens because, you know, they start developing inflammatory health conditions, but they don't necessarily think it's going on in the brain. And that's right. scary. So- yeah. I agree. Um, I know. I think it's so, the the brain is such a fascinating organ, and um, you know, it protects us. It has layers, and it doesn't allow certain things through because it's like a protective mechanism. And um, 
But still, like if we're in a chronic state of inflammation and our immune system is reacting in a way that's like creating these cytokines and these toxins, those can start to break down that brain barrier and things get through that aren't supposed to get through. And this is what can be detrimental in the short term, but also in the long term, you know, we have so much, we see so much around Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementias now. And um, you, we want to protect ourselves from reaching that point by eating foods that support good overall health. And then we can talk about this too, as we get into our conversation, but um, you know, there is that direct uh, relationship with the brain, like, you know, that, that what we can maybe made directly, um, you know, either fight inflammation or create inflammation, but also then there's gut health that we always, you know, we hear the gut brain axis yeah. and the gut and the brain are in communication. So we want to take care of our gut as well. Right. Now, can you tell us, are there any specific dietary patterns or specific foods that can help us balance mood or reduce stress? Yeah. So, um, so I just mentioned gut health and, you know, there's, there are things that have a direct impact on our physical and mental state. If we're eating nutrient dense foods from plants, so plant-based foods, fruits and vegetables, as you mentioned, we're always told to eat the rainbow. And of course, you know, eating fruits and vegetables, a recommendation for everybody. We know that they're super healthy for us because they're powered with antioxidants mm -hmm. and, um, and fiber. And those are the two things that really differentiate, I think, from meat and dairy. So um, the, a dietary pattern, for example, the Mediterranean diet is very rich and plant forward. Lots of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and, you know, whole grains. I still see so many people avoiding um, carbohydrates and whole grains being in that food group of carbohydrates. And I'm like, don't do it because it's going to impact your gut health and your brain health. They are so critical. So it's a type of carbohydrate. Um, and you know, the Mediterranean diet is also rich in legumes with different types of beans and healthy fats from nuts and seeds. So we see that dietary pattern over and over again in creating good health. And the things that are found in all of these foods, dietary fiber, 95% of the population is not getting enough dietary fiber. And that's why we are seeing so, you know, maybe not the only reason why we're seeing a rise in mental health. There's, you know, of course it's multifactorial, but, but it may contribute to mental health issues and mood disorders and, and brain health issues. So not getting enough fiber is definitely playing a part. So, you know, adding these, these plant-based foods um, through, a Mediterranean diet, diet style way of eating, a pattern of eating is going to help provide enough fiber through the fruit, the vegetables, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. Um, and the fiber helps to create that healthy gut. So that's what our gut needs to thrive. And so much starts in the gut. When our gut is healthy, we see less inflammation in the gut, but also less inflammation systemically, including in the brain. We see cholesterol levels go down. Our blood pressure will be better controlled. We may see reduced stress because when we consume enough fiber, we're feeding healthy bacteria that help that eat the fiber and produce our feel good neurotransmitters like serotonin. So it's just all so related. It all starts in the gut. And by consuming plant-based foods, rich in dietary fiber, it's going to help to start right at the base in the gut. And the gut is going to communicate to the brain and send those happy feel good neurotransmitters and produce more of them. So we're going to be in a better mood and we're going to have less inflammation, which also creates a better mood when you feel really good. Um, and then the other compounds in the Mediterranean style, a diet style of eating, um, the phytonutrients plant or phytochemicals they're you know, that's really what they're called in they're compounds. They're not necessarily essential nutrients like vitamins and minerals. We don't need them to survive, but Phytochemicals are plant compounds or compounds that plants make um, as a part of their defense to the environment and to bugs. And when we consume them, we get their health benefits. So the vibrant colors like the um, blue and purple colors in blueberries and red onion and purple cabbage, those are phytonutrients. Um, the leafy greens like dark kale, the dark, the chlorophyll in there, the other phytonutrients and the carotenoids like the carrots and the red peppers. So Going back to what you said, eating the rainbow, it's, it's, it's that simple. Well, it doesn't have to be complicated. Mm -hmm. Eat the rainbow and you're going to get all of these phytonutrients. And 
the, those two compounds, so dietary fiber and phytonutrients plus plant-based foods are just so nutrient rich. So um, for example, leafy greens, nuts and seeds have a lot of magnesium and magnesium is involved with hundreds of biochemical reactions. And specifically it's involved with helping us with brain chemistry and helping us to relax. So it can induce a state of relaxation and it's been shown to help with anxiety. So you're getting a lot of magnesium in these plant-based foods. That's just one example, but also other nutrients. They're just very nutrient dense. I want to stop there because I'll keep going on. Okay. You know. <laughs> I was going to say, it's a very, it's a very complicated process and you, it's enough to make your, your head spin. But you know, the bottom line is get a variety of fruits, vegetables, all types of plant-based foods, you know, big focus on the fiber as well. Right. A hundred percent. I'm so glad you said that. That's pretty much like the, the bottom line of it, your um, viewers here the bottom line is to get a variety of plant-based foods really because plant-based foods come with a variety of types of fiber and a variety of types of phytonutrients and also a variety of like essential nutrients, vitamins and minerals. So eating a variety, eating the rainbow is really the key takeaway from all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know you mentioned foods that have the opposite effect and can actually be damaging. Can you like kind of set, summarize, like name off a few other unhealthy foods that we should probably be avoiding for stress levels? Yeah. And like I said, it's 85 to 90% of the time you're eating well and whole plant-based foods to support well-being. That's great. And occasionally if you go out and you have some French fries at you know a restaurant or if you enjoy cake at a party, you know, it's not going, it's not like it's a gym and gloom after that, you know, it, it, we encourage you to consume plant-based foods most of the time. It, it's really the continuously eating these foods over time, the patterns of ultra processed foods. You mentioned convenience foods. It really is easy to eat conveniently. We can grab and go to a fast food restaurant. We can get um, frozen foods from the grocery store and convenience foods. So things that contain refined sugar and oils. And when you're looking at the ingredient label, if you're not seeing whole foods in there that um, on that ingredient label, like beans, like, you know, black beans and chickpeas and peppers. I'm, I'm thinking in my mind right now, I just bought for, as an example, a uh, veggie burger, a frozen, but I'd like to make my own, but you know, I don't always have time. So I grab and go for me is like a burger out of the freezer, a veggie burger out of the freezer. And there are some wonderful brands out there. Now there was a time when it was like ultra processed, um, a lot of oils and like just a protein isolate, which, you know, you see that on the labels and we don't have to go into detail with that, but you know, it's not, protein isolate is not should trigger your mind. Like that's not a whole food. It's not black beans. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are wonderful brands out there now that have, it's all whole foods. It's black beans, quinoa, red pepper, onion, garlic. So you recognize all those foods. And that is a, an example of something that will be convenient. Um, and you can pile it on like you would a regular burger and add all your fixings and, you know, avocado and lettuce and tomato um, to make it healthy versus some of the ultra processed foods that have ingredients that you don't recognize. Um, meat and dairy, because they're high in saturated fat, are also inflammatory. And you know, saturated fat's one component. But when we're in the season of grilling out right now, at least here in the US and it's warm, um, grilling meat is has many other compounds that are formed when grilling from the protein, the heat and the protein, the heat and the fat um, produces carcinogenic compounds. So an inflammatory compound. So yeah. So again, plant forward is, um, filling your plate up with mostly plants or mm -hmm. exclusively plants is really the best thing to do for your body. If you want optimal health. Yes, I agree. And I'm glad you mentioned the grilling too, because even though grilling can be a low fat cooking method, like you said, it produces, you know, smoke and things like that. And, you know, it can be, it can be carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point. So safe grilling techniques, you know, what do they say to uh, marinate your food? Marinating your food, I guess, is better because it like reduces the carcinogenic <laughs> compounds or something like that. Oh, yeah, but maybe. I, and I've heard of that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also cooking on a lower setting and for less time, like there yeah. are things you can do. Um, My but... mom likes burnt hot dogs. 
And I, I'm always like, don't eat anything if it's burnt, but that is the worst thing, the worst thing you can do. Right. Yeah. Even plant-based foods. Like, yeah, I, I used to like burnt Brussels sprouts until I knew that they were not as, I mean, there's common sense too. You know, if you're killing a food, you're probably not getting rid of a lot of the nutrients, but yeah. also there are compounds that are formed when you burn the food that are great for your health. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that information on eating for, you know, stress relief and mood. I want to ask you if you have any practical tips on how to incorporate these mood boosting foods into everyday life so that we can all reap, reap these amazing benefits. What are some of the easiest ways? Yeah. So looking at food labels. So if you are looking for convenience and you have, you know, you're feeding family, you don't have time during the week. One thing is to look for whole foods on the ingredient label. Whenever you're looking at ingredients, um, plant-based, obviously if you can, so like bean burgers, um, simple convenience foods. I always advise people like to go to their pantry. What's in your pantry that you enjoy that's plant-based. So if you love black beans or refried beans, consider like a taco night and consuming you know, whole grain tortilla versus white tortilla or even lettuce wraps and making a taco night. So you can use canned products and some fresh salsa and guacamole and add some onion and tomato, just pile on the veggies. So layering on, again, the rainbow of veggies. So thinking about each time that you sit down to eat, do I have at least like three colors here, at least three colors on your plate? Mm -hmm. and layer on as much as you can in the plant-based foods. You can also do like pasta night and do a whole grain pasta or a legume pasta. And instead of just doing a pasta sauce, maybe you have a favorite pasta sauce, which is great, but think about the veggies in your fridge. Again, if you've got broccoli, peppers, onion, garlic, like just add it all, like saute it a little bit and it doesn't take that long to saute and add it with the pasta and the sauce. So just wherever you can think about how, what vegetables can I have, even breakfast. Avocado toast is fantastic, but what else? can you add to that avocado toast so again whole grain bread to get that fiber avocado um you know add some chopped red onion to it add some kimchi maybe you want to add some sprouts or sliced radish again variety and think about maybe what's in season what's in your fridge what can you use up because veggies you know obviously have a short shelf life so we want we don't want to waste them because we don't want to waste our money we also just don't want to waste food because it goes in the landfill and then also we're not getting the nutrition that they offer. So think about like, always think about what's in your fridge and what you can add to meals so that you're saving money, reducing landfill waste and nourishing your body. One quick, quick, quick thing I wanted to mention that um, is batch cooking. Like, so if you do have limited time during the week, I cannot stress enough. I am personally not a planner. I really don't love, I like to kind of wing it, but it does not work well with eating. Yep. And Maybe wing it. It's just so hard. And you know, it's stressful when you're like, what are we going to eat tonight? I don't know. What do we have in the fridge? And you have to make it run to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, if you plan ahead one hour or two hours during the weekend, or whenever you have time during the week, batch cook some brown rice or other whole grain and some beans and, you know, have everything ready, chop up some veggies, whatever you can, so that all you need to do is throw it together during the week. It makes it so much easier. Okay. Yeah. And I, I love that tip that you said about uh, incorporating at least three different colors. You're, right. adding, you're <laughs> going to be adding more fiber. So instead of just the regular plain old avocado toast, which a lot of people, you know, could do is, you know, when they think of avocado toast, they just think toast and avocados. But like you said, maybe you can add some tomato on there. Maybe you can add some sprouts on there. So you're adding more nutrients, more vitamins, more minerals, more, you know, the phytonutrients. Um, yeah. A lot of benefits to those. So exactly. let's now kind of transition into what I think a lot of people are waiting for is the yoga and the breath work techniques, because gosh, this whole, the world is just so full of all kinds of stress. And I think we need some stress relieving techniques. A lot of people don't know how to relieve that stress once they're in it. So can you lead like a brief demonstration on let's first do me, well, do you want to do the yoga or the breath work first? I think maybe we can talk about the yoga first and that can lead into the breath work. I okay. feel like, yeah, the yoga poses might be, people probably have seen it before. And, and I think it's, some of them are pretty accessible. Mm -hmm. um, and also that is bi-directional. So uh, there are studies showing that um, folks that have less stress and have a more positive outlook tend to choose more fruits and vegetables. And then also, um, like there are studies showing when there's like an intervention and people are 
placed on a higher fruit and vegetable diet, then they start to get happier and they start choosing more. So alleviating stress and getting yourself into a place of just being more present and grounded through healthier food choices is great, but also practicing something like yoga and breath work can help you get into that state of making better food choices. So Mm -hmm. it's all so related. Uh Um, And one of the things in today's busy world, I think that is just really so important because there's just so much um, overconsumption of everything from social media to just things happening in the world and TV and news and work and family, like just so much. Um, I cannot stress enough the importance of just taking a moment to pause. It could be two minutes and practicing a yoga pose can be um, very beneficial, even if it's only for two minutes. And most of us can find like two minutes, right? To just pause and either do um, a couple of restorative poses. So one is child's pose. People may be familiar. And I think that you have some visuals that you'll show as a part of this, but um, you don't need a yoga mat. If you have just like a clean floor to sit on or any kind of mat or your bed, even, um, you know, uh, kind of sitting down in between your legs and um, extending your hands forward, or they can be by your side and just putting your head down and um, relaxing just with your head touching the floor or your bed and taking a few deep breaths in that posture is something wonderful you can do before bedtime. You could do it in the middle of the day. If you find that you're stressed during the middle of the day, just pausing and getting into child pose, it kind of gives you this sense of comfort because you're kind of like in this, you're in the child's pose, you're, Mm -hmm. you're coming back to yourself. Um, and just taking a few deep breaths in that posture helps to calm you down and like activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which brings your heart rate down and helps to calm you. Another posture is um, cat cow. So on all fours, your hands and your knees and just inhaling, looking up to the sky and exhaling, dropping your gaze down to the floor, doing that maybe five times, inhaling up, exhaling down. And And that is a great way when you're moving your body that way with the breath, it helps to alleviate tension. It helps to open up channels in your body and just, again, kind of brings you to the center and and helps to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. And it's just great movement. Mm -hmm. Um, We're a lot of times stuck in front of the computer and it just feels really good. It's a release. It's like a stress release. Um, Another one is legs up the wall pose. So you lay on your back and you, um, you know, you're just maybe palms up to the sky, laying on your back and your um, glutes are like up against the wall and your legs are straight up against the wall. I just lay, just staying there and breathing for a couple of minutes. I will say for anyone who has uncontrolled um, blood pressure, high blood pressure, it's not recommended that you do any postures where your head is below your feet because that can raise the blood pressure. So if you're in general good health, then this is fine to do. It's very restorative and relaxing. Again, a great one to do before bedtime, just to kind of relax and settle in before you prepare your body for sleep. And then the last one is a fun one. And I think it's a great stress reliever is happy baby pose. Mm -hmm. Um, So grabbing onto your feet and you're laying on your back and you're grabbing onto your feet and you just kind of like rock back and forth a little bit and babies are fun and they grab their feet and they're playful. So this can kind of instill some playfulness Mm -hmm. and just kind of bring you back to yourself, you know, just have fun with it. Um, again, any of these can be, you don't do all of them. You can choose one if one resonates with you and, uh, just try it for a few breaths. Okay. And I love that because it's, there's, there are just simple poses that you can do. And like you said, 60 seconds, that's all you need, you know, and, um, even if people have physical restrictions, they, and they literally can't get on the floor, then that's where the next thing we're going to talk about comes in. Right. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, breathing is so important and we all, I think so many of us just take it for, you know, we breathe not, you know, just throughout the day and don't really pay much attention to it. But if you just pause for a moment and notice your breath, you notice like the whole world 
stops around you because we don't do this very often, but anytime during the day where you're feeling, you don't feel anything, you just do this and just to become present. But if you are feeling stressed or if, you know, you're about to do a presentation or if somebody said something that bugged you, just taking a moment to come to your breath really helps to just get grounded and present and helps you pause before you react to something. Like it just really brings you to a good centered place. Mm -hmm. And um, to notice your breath, you can do like a very simple exercise where you put your hand on your heart and your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your belly and take a deep breath in filling up your belly and feel your belly expand and then exhale out through your nose or your mouth and then feel your belly contract. So inhale, exhale. And then one more time, take a deep, deep breath in. Just breathing feels so good. <laughs> Sometimes right? it's just all you need. Right, just noticing your breath and taking yeah. a deep breath in, it does, it feels, you know, it helps the, the way this relates to stress and the cardiovascular system is it can help to reduce heart rate. It can bring your blood pressure down, can alleviate stress. So reduce cortisol levels. Mm -hmm. So important, important for sleeping well. Um, and we know that a good night's sleep can also help to impact our dietary choices and how we feel the next day and our mood and brain health. So it is like all interconnected. Um, one other breath I want to say technique. It is a technique, but it's also something we all probably do on the regular without even realizing it is sighing. So like, if you feel like, I know for me, if I'm ready to do a presentation or do something where I'm sorry, I catch myself holding my breath and then I take a deep sigh, like, you know, you just, you feel like you naturally want to do it or you know, just before certain things, it could be any scenario in your life, but you may notice at times where you're like, and like if you let out an audible sound with that sigh, it is such a release, but there's like physiologic, physiologically, there are things happening in your body. That's, there's a reason that we naturally want to sigh. But if we take conscious moments throughout the day and sigh, again, I, I like to do it in between a work day. So if I've just finished a big project, I'm going on to the next one. I might just like sit in, you know, just release everything, mm -hmm. step away from Maybe and... that's why they call it a sigh of relief. It's like it's a stress it... relief, you know? It makes sense now. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Like now we have evidence to show that it's beneficial for our health. Mm -hmm. So it's more now if we can just incorporate these techniques into our day that take less than a minute. Mm -hmm. That's 60 seconds or less. We could even do it while we're on a Zoom meeting. You know, we, if you're in the middle of work, you can do it at any time, but it just helps to bring you back to present. It helps to um, activate your parasympathetic nerve. Like you just calm down and it, and it just brings you to a grounded, more of a grounded state. So mm -hmm. if you want to take it a little bit deeper and you find that breath work, you know, you're finding that the sigh or just noticing your belly breathing is helpful. Oh, one other thing with the belly breathing that you could practice if you, um, for folks listening, um, if you really want to, uh, engage your belly, try laying down when you have time or, you know, before bedtime, put a pillow over your belly and notice the pillow going up and down. And that can help you engage your belly just by putting a pillow over your belly. Cause sometimes it's hard to feel, you know, that motion, but putting a right. pillow there. Can help. So if you want to take it a little bit deeper, there's a pranayama breath. There's actually some great research on using a pranayama breath, um, to lower blood pressure. And it doesn't have to be, in fact, it's not recommended. It's intense. It's just a slow breath. It's also called, called the ocean breath because it sounds like the ocean. And it, for me, when I do practice this breath, it actually, it, it reminds me of the ocean and just that sound alone is soothing. And then there's the vibration in the back of your throat. So mm -hmm. it's an inhale through your nose and an exhale through your nose. And you'll make like an audible sound in the back of your throat. So hopefully you can hear. Can you hear that? I cannot hear that. 
you can't. No. <laughs> you go, sir. But I have heard if you are odd, like that's why in the end of yoga, when they do those oh yes, that's like the same thing. Being that just being audible, like you said, does physiological things inside that are better. Yeah. Like the uh, the um the audible, the sound and the vibrate the vibration. Yeah. It helps to kind of shake things up and it's a release. And do the pranayama breath. So it's like a audible ocean sound in the back of your throat. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. If it helps, you you want to do this slowly to get the blood pressure lowering effects. You you do it um, slowly. You can count to four if that's helpful, or count to three if you want to. If a using a count is helpful to you, for some they don't want to count you know, completely disengage your mind. So you can go either way, but just a slow inhale followed by a slow exhale and an audible sound in the back of your throat can help to lower heart rate, reduce blood pressure. Yeah, and keep that it is so this is all, this stuff is so interesting to me for someone who, but you, you know, you live and breathe this stuff and you teach this stuff on a daily basis. So for somebody like me and probably a lot of our viewers, they're like, this is amazing to me. This is all I had to do this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess to kind of summarize everything that we talked about, you know, incorporate more plant-based foods that can improve mental health, reduce stress. And as a result, it could improve uh, cardiovascular health and beyond. Yeah. And, you know, practicing yoga and breath work, you can enhance those benefits by doing those things. I'm going, <laughs> I want to encourage all the viewers to eat more plant-based foods, you know, and minimize the, the meat and the dairy. And, you know, I always push plant-based meals on my patients, um, working in the cardiac rehab as well. So Nicole, uh, could you please just tell us where viewers can find you or learn more about you? Sure. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, purelyplanted.com. I publish an article every week around plant-based eating. I also have plant-based recipes on there. I was going to encourage your viewers as well to um, find some recipes that look interesting to them and maybe start with one, one recipe a week. If plant-based eating is new to them, it doesn't have to be on my site, but be any, you know, there's such a plethora of plant-based recipes online now or cookbooks. I'm also on Instagram, purely planted. There's a double underscore in between purely and planted, um, and YouTube as well, purely planted. So yeah, feel free to follow or reach out if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Nicole, for, for joining me. This was so amazing. And I know, I know I learned a lot about the specific benefits of eating these, you know, stress, stress busting foods and um, like definitely be practicing the breath work and the yoga techniques on a regular basis. Um, so before I let you go, I do want to ask if you have any advice or maybe a positive message about prioritizing mental and physical well-being. Ooh, yeah. Um, I think just taking a minute we talked about today, it doesn't have to take time. I think when people think about self-care and mental well-being, it feels um, there's a barrier. It feels like, how am I going to work this into my life? But if they, if folks can just start with a simple breathing technique and just being aware of adding plants to their plate. Those two things don't take a lot of time. So just bringing awareness to your plate. What three colors can I add? Plant-based colors, like you said, and taking some breaths throughout the day can do wonders for mental health and mood. And that just creates this whole cascade, positive cascade effect on sleep and mental wellness, physical wellness, all of it. So cardiovascular health to so start there. That's simple. Well, thanks again, Nicole. You take it easy, okay? And hopefully maybe in the future you can join us again. <laughs> that would be great. Thank you for having me, Karen.